Ashborough, you know, a huge hospitality well, Richard and I have been here, it's been here a bit longer, but uh, just in a few days I've been here, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, the generosity of spirit and uh, the friend, friendship I've been showing, so thank you so very kindly. Uh, Richard from London, I'm from uh, the southwest of Scotland, a place called Galloway, and so I thought I would read maybe, to begin with, a, a poem that I wrote just before I came here, in actual fact, and which, while I've been here, I've translated into the plot. So I'll read it in English, and then read it in Scots, okay? And thus you will be able to understand the difference. Unfortunately, I have to read it from my phone, okay? I know that's, uh, <laughs> I know that's controversial, but since that's the only place it exists, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> Scrolling's easy for them. <laughs> That's gracious. We're born scrollers. <laughs> I wrote this in the Stratford. My, my little daughter uh, put some rosemary uh, in my pocket as a, as a lamp sort of thing. And so I, I wrote this poem about this. It's called Rosemary is for Remembering. Rosemary is for remembering, Ophelia said, before she drowned. I am rubbing rosemary near my nose and all the wash of smut and sweat and irritation is drained and we are in a garden. You are spilling herbs into my top pocket. It is hot summer. Your hair gleams below the little cloth band you bought with your pocket money. I see it all. I smell it all. How can I tell you about such remembering? Your sore smile, that sore smile. This is then Scots. Rosemary's for minding, Ophelia said, afore she drooned. I'm swearing at least to my neb, and all the wesh of dreck and sweat and fash is tuned. With my garden, and your cowpin herbs into my tap pooch, it's bealing summer. Your hair glons are blow the wee plute bond you bought with your spens. Who can I tell you an insect minding? Your sear smile, yon sear smile. It's a bloody funny, it's got raptures of close at the end, that's what's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I say, I come from the Fees in Galloway, which is uh, an area of Scotland most people don't come to and which has suffered over the years massive uh, depopulation as uh, the children, the young ones, certainly can't get work and have always moved uh, elsewhere. And so I, I, that's been part of my poetic theme over the last couple of years, but I've written quite a lot about that. Uh, so I thought I would write about, uh, I, would, I would read you two poems about that. One's called Cottage, it's about a deserted croft or cottage, you know the word croft? An old farmhouse which has tumbled down and which once upon a time was a vibrant hub of a family, but which, uh, you know, is now just a ruin. All my poems are very short, you'll be glad to know. It's called Cottage. In steady rain, the walls rear up, every other sign gone to moss, no garden, no patch of kale, only this, broken on a hillside, a space where rituals of birth and death and work were acted out almost in cloud. Lit by candlelight, the faces here for 50 years, now in bloodlines or dreams. The roof came in, then cold stars. We were there. It was a second hand bookshop in the face, which is the major town of uh, the face in Galway. And uh, I got the second hand book, and this page of a letter fell out. It was very, very thin handwritten, obviously very, very old, and it was part of a letter sent from somebody to somebody else. And you couldn't exactly tell uh, who the recipient was or who the sender was or, or whatever. Uh, but I imagined that it was, well I didn't have to imagine, it was a love letter. Uh, so I wrote to this poem called Letter about that. Here is a letter, come across the membrane of ocean over the back of a world curved like a whale. I unwrap it like tissue and sentences spill out as though the seal on a jar has broken. 
coils of corn flour glue on paper, thin as shell. I saw a sailor's valentine once in a museum in Nantucket Sound, a mosaic of broken scallop glued in a compass rose, writ from the heart, it said. Words come best like that in ink or blood, when the source is from a major vein. I read and understand this much, if ink sees off time and miles, then so must love. That we moan now. We always like the poet, we always like the poetry moan. I don't know whether you know the poetry moan, but uh, Rich will know the poetry moan. Uh, rather than applauding, what happens is after you've said a particular effect and where you're meant to go. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite a full scale of orgiastic moan, but a slight <laughs> affecting moan. So I, I did hear a wee moan there, which is always reassuring. <laughs> this is a, 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 an older one about what I feel about the Greeks and the Romans. I always felt that the Greeks were a much more sexy, sophisticated crowd than the Romans, who were like sort of proto Nazis. And so. <laughs> I wrote this uh, poem a long time ago called Greco Roman Culture. One, the Acropolis Lindos, below blue spirals between stalks of rock and beyond to backs of islands inching above the lip of distance like whales. What angles, what spinning light to burn dreams on stone. The men who built this dizziness had eyes lidless like the sun. Two, hard knock pass, quarters carved from guts of granite, grey slaked and scrim blown like sand. Above, clouds knock like rope, fill the gaps between broken shafts of mountain. These little hard men, leaving their slough of monuments, dreamed. Anarax. Maybe you know what an anarch is. <laughs> the point that point is somewhat lost if you know what an anarch is. It's a very, it's a very sort of English British garment to, to wear off, yeah, to, to, you know, to ward off the weather. So hard knock passes this Roman fort in the north of, north of England, windswept place. So I was comparing the uh, windows with, with that. A couple more perhaps. This is a, a, a lot of poetry I wrote, I wrote about my family. I've kind of exhausted that reservoir to a certain extent. But this poem is about my father. And my father fought in World War II and was shot down in the early part of World War II. He was the rear gunner in a, a Wellington bomber and was shot down over the Middle East. And although he survived, uh, you know, he was completely affected. And it's, war obviously doesn't just affect the people who are injured in it, but it affects generations past here. The ripples go on to, to affect absolutely everybody. And my father left home. He was tormented in many ways. He left home when I was quite young. And uh, way down the line, uh, just before he died, I received this letter from him. And so I wrote this poem with my father. And it sums up the kind of things I remember about him. My father. Fathers were good to my pals, lectured them about cash, then bought them in flats, deplored their morals but flitted them from place to place at dead of night. Oh, my dad was spared, they cheerfully admit as they phoned for loans. At such times, I would remember my own and his two pieces of advice. How to remove your bayonet from an enemy's ribcage, and how to disarm a maniac coming at you from the stairs. They thought their fathers weird for having cardigans. I thought mine odd, because he talked to men who burned alive in 1942, and because of other things I'd watched him do, vault walls three times his size, or sprint on a busy street to punch my mum. When he went, left a hole as a trepan night. I have no idea where he ended up, though I knew he would live long as mad folk do. Years down the line, I received a sentence or two, 
written in his cramped and delicate monkish way, I wonder it began if he'd remember me. Yeah, just one last one then. Yeah, that's all. <coughs> I still have love poetry, except it's miserable, of course. Nobody writes poetry if they're happy, do they? No. <laughs> There's no such thing as happy poetry. Is it Montemont said, happiness writes white? <laughs> and this is a, a poem I wrote having watched two swallows, two little birds separated by a pane of glass uh, near where I live. It's called Now, now I Know what, what Love Is. I should sing it, shouldn't I? Now I Know What Love Is. <laughs> There's a swallow next to her. Its neck is flame in the setting sun. Its breast white as it presses for a crack in the window or door between broken shafts of wood and empty paint bullets. Outside, its mate hangs on the ledge, their heads only a tiny transparency apart. An illusion of togetherness, one in sunlight, one in shadow. Seven thousand miles through hot angles of air, through desert, jungle, and reed bed. And now only mirror motions of love, a small beating on glass. Thank you very much. <laughs>